Dolphins fans, what's going on? It's Ben Morgan, Fins Up Network. Got two more videos for you before we jump into week 12 prep for those Houston Texans. Today's video going to be positional grades for the Miami Dolphins offense so far this season. Tomorrow's video going to be the same thing, but positional grades for the defensive side of the ball. But before we get started, I want to hear from you. Drop your positional grades in the comments below. I like to think of the comment section basically as like an extension of these videos. So let's carry on the conversation there. I want to see your grades, want to see how they compare with the positional grades that I am giving out. But well, we got a lot of positions to get to. So let's jump right in with the quarterbacks who I gave a B plus overall. Remember, this is an entire positional unit. And the only reason that this isn't an A or an A minus for me is because with Tua's injury history, you bring in a veteran, you bring in Teddy Bridgewater, basically with the request that, you know what, if Tua misses extended time, we need you to come in. We need your veteran leadership to keep us afloat, win a game or two. That did not happen with Teddy Bridgewater. And to be honest with you, it kind of reminded me of last year with Jacoby Brissett. You think you're bringing in this veteran, keep you afloat, keep you in the playoff picture. And luckily, we still are in the playoff picture. We're sitting very, very well in the playoff picture. But Jacoby didn't win a damn game last year. Teddy Bridgewater, Skylar Thompson, essentially the same thing this year. So if this was a Tua only grade, quite honestly, we are looking at an A. The dude won every single game that he started outside of that Bengals game. And you know it. Injured in the second quarter, we were looking good. Probably could have won that game. Don't want to speculate, but essentially won every single game that he started outside of that. You look at him, first place or near the top of numerous statistical categories. He has done everything. He's answered the call. He's answered the bell. Every single thing that you ask of a franchise quarterback to do, Tua has done it this year. And quite honestly, I could I could talk enough good about Tua to the point where the device that you are watching this video on, the battery would die on it if I went as long as I wanted to. End of the day, though, I think we can all agree we've got our franchise quarterback with every single thing that this guy has been able to push through. And now to be, after 11 weeks, near the top and in the MVP conversation in the entire NFL, unbelievably impressive. So I'm going to give him an A. Like I said, I'm not doing outright individual players, but he'd be about an A for me. But the entire group in general, because of losing those games, giving the group a B plus, move on to the running backs. I'm going to do it again, because if we were grading since Jeff Wilson has been here, we'd be looking at another A or an A minus. But since we've got to factor in the time, the Chase Edmonds experiment, the slow start in general to the running game, I got to give the entire group a B. But now that you got Chase Edmonds out of the picture, look at Raheem Moser throughout the season, averaging over four and a half yards per carry. Since Jeff Wilson has been here, averaging six and a half yards per carry. Both of that in nice plays and touchdowns in the passing game. Jeff Wilson already has some pass pro tape out there that you could essentially lead a clinic with. Protection issues of the ball, neither of them have lost a fumble yet. I'm going to knock on wood. I don't want to be the one that jinxes that one. I think Raheem Mostert has like one drop on the entire season. And now when we look back to that Browns game, when we finally saw a defense attempt to take away the middle of the field for the passing game, we saw our running backs absolutely carve up that defense. So yeah, the run game hasn't been the focal point of the Miami Dolphins offense, kind of the way I really thought it would in more games with Mike McDaniel coming over with his history as a run game coordinator. I thought we'd see it be a little bit more of a focal point. I'm going to give the entire unit a B with the caveat that it could be higher if from day one it would have been Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. Next position, fullback. Yes, Miami Dolphins fans, Alec Ingold is the fullback position. So we don't need to spend a ton of time on this one. And the only reason for the, uh, the downgrade is the rare penalty or miscue, which we've seen very few of them. So I can't outright say he's been perfect with everything. So we're going to go A- minus for Ingle, the fullback position. But man, he's been as advertised. He has helped protect the quarterback. He's helped making those run lanes. He's caught the ball when he's needed to. I still wish Tua could have paid like two less inches on that wheel route that he had week one against the Patriots. Been waiting for them to dial that one back up because that's not something that defenses are entirely expecting to see. A fullback on a wheel route doesn't happen often. 
So I'm hoping that we get to see that out of Ingold here in the not so distant future. But like I said, short one with the fullbacks. Let's jump to the wide receivers because how about this unit? Two receivers in the top five in the NFL in regards to receiving yardage, even after the bye week. Jalen Waddell, I think he had, what, 9.8 yards per catch as rookie season? Yeah, he set the record for most receptions in a season for a rookie, but we're like, dude, that yards per catch yard average has to go up. Over 17 now this year. So we've seen him and his dynamic ability, both downfield, intermediate, yards after the catch, and then Tyreek. First in the NFL in receiving yards. Basically, on pace to set the all-time receiving yardage record, the stress that he puts on a defensive loan, even when his number's not getting called, what he does to create other people, give other people space to get open, the dude is one of one. The fact that you can trade for this guy, this level of wide receiver, and we made it happen, he is a Miami Dolphin every single day. I just, look at that smile. I mean, it makes me smile every single day knowing that we got the one of one wide receiver in the NFL. And then you look a little further down the depth chart. You got Trent Sherfield coming into his own as this team's wide receiver three, making the most of the opportunities. I talked about it last week in a video. I think it was the stock up, stock down video, but run blocking from the wide receiver position, Mike McDaniel loves. Trent Sherfield has done awesome at it. And like I said, the, he's not crushing in targets. He probably wants more targets, but the fact that he knows his role and he's called upon, and when he's called upon, that he's making these plays and staying mentally in the game, unbelievable. Hats off to Trent Sherfield. But then look earlier in the season, River Craycraft coming up big when his number is called. I think he went back-to-back -back games with touchdowns. I've loved nearly every second of this year's wide receiver unit. And the only downgrade, the only downgrade that I've put into this is the fact that earlier in the season, Jalen Waddell had a little bit of a rough patch with the drops, and then he had that costly fumble against the Vikings. Like I said, don't want to hold it all against him. He wasn't the only reason we lost that game, but it was a huge play. Speaking of fumbles, Braylon Sanders had that fumble in the Lions game. And then you look at Cedric Wilson, who we brought in prior to Tyreek Hill, prior to the trade, so we thought his role would be a little bit different. He's kind of been invisible, though. You've seen more run with him lately as a punt returner, which has been less than spectacular as well. But he's been a little bit of a uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? A little bit of a non-factor, for lack of a better term. And then Eric Azukanma. The fact that we used a fourth-round draft pick on him. And I know it's the mental side of the game that's that's keeping him sidelined right now, not being active for a single game so far this season. But the fact that River Craycraft and Trent Sherfield and even Braylon Sanders was able to get called up for a game. And Eric Azukanma is continuing to just ride the bench and not being able to see game action. A little bit of a downgrade there, but overall, how can you not absolutely love having Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, two top five wide receivers in the NFL right now? Give them an A. Tight ends, we're going to go with a C plus here because one of the biggest questions all offseason, everyone knows it. How does Mike McDaniel, how, how does Mike Gesicki, how do they gel? How does Mike Gesicki fit in this Mike McDaniel offense in this scheme? And while he doesn't appear to be an exact fit, you can't be too upset with what we've seen from him as an outright receiver when his number has been called as well. The, the blocking, we know he's not a, we know he's not George Kittle. We know he's not one of these wide or tight ends that's going to stick his nose in there and get all these blocks, but he is third on the team in receptions, third on the team in receiving yards and tied for second in receiving touchdowns. So outside of him, there really hasn't been in too much in regards to like receiving from the tight end position. So you're basically judging Durham Smythe as a blocker, which he's been fine with. And then Hunter Long has been okay, but he ended up getting hurt after what was probably his best game as a Miami Dolphin. So despite Mike Gesicki being pretty solid as a pass catcher, I'm going to give the unit a C plus because I was really hoping that we would see a couple of things this season from this particular unit. Either Mike Gesicki taking a huge leap as a blocker and be on the field more often than what he is, or Hunter Long making that second year jump, making Mike Gesicki look a little bit more replaceable. So to be quite honest, I'm going to be spending more time this offseason talking about Mike Gesicki and the tight end position. It's inevitable. We're going to be talking about that this offseason. So I don't think go too much further into it today. But so far, I have not seen enough to think that Mike Gesicki is going to stay here if he's going to command $14 million plus per season. Also, I don't think I've seen enough from Hunter Long to think that he can be the do-it-all guy in 2023. So I'm going to give, I'm going to talk more about that this offseason, 
but I'm going to give the tight ends a C plus. Let's wrap things up here with the offensive line. Give them a B plus, but relatively speaking, compared to what we've seen from the Miami Dolphins offensive line ever since two has been on this team, this damn unit should probably get an A plus. But in reality, I'm going to keep it a B plus, which is perfectly fine by me for a couple of reasons. So I said coming into the season that if Miami can keep Tua upright, which sort of we had a couple of struggles earlier in the season, and honestly, Tua's injury, the main one against the Bengals, that wasn't on the offensive line. That was Tua literally holding on to the ball too long, trying to create too much. So that's not even on the offensive line. But the other thing I wanted from the line was let's create a top 20 run game. And, and that would be enough. I'm not asking for too much there. The offensive line, in my opinion, simply needed to be able to make the run game enough of a threat to help maximize the play action game for Tua and those dynamic wide receivers. And now, honestly, they're not there yet. Believe it or not, the amount of success that we've had on the ground game the last couple of weeks, we still rank just 27th in the league in rushing yards per game. But between the injuries up front, I mean, Liam Eikenberg, Teron Armstead, Austin Jackson, and Chase Edmonds. Here we go, Chase Edmonds again. Literally leading the NFL in leaving rushing yards on the field before we uh, dealt them into the Broncos. But we have seen a massive jump in performance just even over the last two weeks with Jeff Wilson at running back. And then you got Robert Jones at left guard and then Brandon Shell at right tackle. And honestly, there's even still room to grow. Uh, we just need to see it on a more of a consistent basis. And who knows when Liam's back and when Austin's back, are they even going to get their jobs back at this point? Because that offensive line over the last three to four weeks has really gelled and grown as a unit. But here's the deal. I'm I'm even bumping it up. I got to give it that B plus because of that court trio. You know who it is. Teron Armstead, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt. Those three have been the absolute rocks. With, with Connor Williams switching position and going to center and dominating the way that he is. And Teron Armstead literally fighting through injury since week one. He missed the one game, but he's out there throwing around guys like Miles Garrett, erasing the Miles Garretts of the world. We saw how destructive he was on certain plays against the Bills. You didn't even see him on the field when the Dolphins played the Browns. And then you've got Connor Williams and um, Robert Hunt, both top six in their position based on PFF grades as well. So offensive line was one of our biggest question marks heading into the season. I know we were a bit uneasy. Week one, when you're going to go out there with Liam Eikenberg as your starting left guard, and Austin Jackson is your starting right tackle. You're like, what are we doing? I thought we were going to invest in protecting two of this offseason. But you know what? Come 11 weeks later, I think we all feel pretty damn good right now about how things have turned out. So let's go ahead and give the offensive line a B plus. But that is it for the Miami Dolphins offense. Like I said, I will be back tomorrow doing the same thing, but for the defense. But I want to hear your grades as well. So go ahead, drop them in the comments. Let's carry on the conversation there. But that is my time for today, Dolphins fans. And until tomorrow, fins.